Hi there. Welcome back to Simply Swider, your ultimate appliance fixing squad. I'll be your host, Jason Carter, your trusty appliance technician. If you're dealing with some dishwasher drama, you've come to the right place. So, here's the scoop. I've been hands-on with many GE dishwashers for quite a while now, fixing one issue after the other, and oh boy, do they love tossing that H2O or H20 error code. For example, take a look at this image and you'll spot the annoying code. It's a sneaky error that just won't quit. But hang on tight because I've got the lowdown on this problem. I've been there, tackled it, and now I'm going to spill the beans. The good news? This issue is easier to solve than it looks. So stay tuned, as I unravel the four common causes and all of my trade secrets to banish that H2O error for good. Are you ready? Let's roll. Okay, so diving straight in. When your GE dishwasher starts flashing that H2O error, what it's really trying to say is, Hey, where's my water? In tech lingo, the H2O error means there's a hiccup in the water supply. In fact, if you pull out your GE manual, here's what you'll find. As you can see, there's one major culprit, insufficient water. Or to be more precise, this error code means your dishwasher's feeling parched. Because it's either not getting enough water or, even worse, not getting any water at all. What causes this? From experience, it could be some rogue part acting up or maybe your water supply is getting to the dishwasher under low pressure. Either way, you'll need to get rid of the error code. So, here are the four most common issues that can prompt the H2O error, plus what you need to do to fix them. I'll never forget one of my earliest jobs, right when I was starting out as a technician. That day, I got a call from a lady who was almost in tears. Her brand new GE dishwasher was throwing a fit, refusing to let water in, when I got there, guess what I found on the dishwasher's display? Yep, you're right. It was the notorious H2O error. One thing I know is that every appliance has its quirks. With dishwashers, sufficient water pressure is always critical to its normal operation. Because that is what allows the spray arms to release strong jets of water to aid in cleaning. Therefore, when the pressure is low, your appliance won't be able to achieve its primary objective which is to clean your mountain of dirty dishes. I mean, think about it for a second. If the water's just trickling in, your dishwasher will feel underwhelmed and unable to complete its task. And then, bam, you'll get a H2O error right in your face. Having been around the block a few times, I can tell you for free. If the water's barely making its way into your appliance, chances are there's something blocking your home's pipes or there's an obstruction in the dishwasher's water supply system. From my own experience, a simple peek and some basic checks can tell you if you've hit the jackpot. First things first, turn off the water supply. Trust me, the last thing you want is to flood your kitchen. Once that's done, carefully detach the water supply hose from the inlet valve and remember, steady hands win the race. Then, Get a bowl or direct the hose over your sink and turn on the water supply. Here, you want to check for two things. One, is it clear and free of debris and other forms of dirt? Two, is the water pressure sufficient? Now, when you have low pressure and a lot of debris or dirt in your water supply, it could be an indication that there's a clog somewhere along the line. However, in the absence of the latter, low pressure could indicate the presence of a kink or a major leak in the water supply system. And since a leak can't go unnoticed, kinks are often the most common culprits in this case. With that said, if there is low pressure, one thing you can do is inspect your hose. So, peek into it and give it a little bendy bend to check if anything's obstructing its way. In this example, my client's inlet hose was clogged at the dishwasher connecting end, as in, where it attaches to the valve. Anyway, if you find a clog or kink, you can use a hanger wire or plumber's snake to clear it out. But, if that doesn't work, I'd advise getting a new hose. After your fix, reinstall the hose into the dishwasher and reopen the water supply. If it's all gushing and glorious, you've just fixed the issue and the H2O error should disappear. If not, let's try the next possible cause. A while ago, I got a call for a job. When I got to my client's house, I checked the water pressure and ensured that the inlet hose wasn't clogged. 
Once those two things checked out, I knew right away where to look. When it comes to the H2O error, the water inlet valve is often the second most common place my instincts take me. You see, the water inlet valve is the gatekeeper of your dishwasher. Basically, it decides how much water gets in. So, what do you think would happen when it gets grumpy and stops working properly? By grumpy, I mean it's either clogged, stuck due to mineral buildup, or damaged. That's right. Your dishwasher won't get any water, and that will prompt the H2O error. Now, if you're feeling a bit adventurous and want to know where this gatekeeper resides, it's not that hard to find. Usually, the valve will be at the point where your inlet hose connects to the dishwasher. Here's a picture of what I'm talking about. Now. Once you're able to detach the inlet valve, it becomes easy to check it for damage and clogging. For example, during this repair run, the valve was broken and needed replacement. All right, time for some real talk. From my years in the business, I'll tell you this. A damaged inlet valve isn't worth the tears or effort trying to fix it. It's like trying to mend a cracked mug with tape. It just won't hold. So, you'll need to replace it. But... It's also important to note that a clogged valve isn't a lost cause. We can bring it back to life. In other words, if it's not broken or riddled with mineral buildup, it can still be fixed. With that in mind, here's how to go about replacing or cleaning the valve. Step one, safety first. Turn off your dishwasher's power and water supply. Then keep a bowl and towel nearby to collect any water that may spill. Step two, Unscrew the lower panel to gain access to the part. With trusty pliers, disconnect the supply hose from our possibly faulty friend, the inlet valve. Step three, use a socket to take off the junction box cover. Beneath it, you'll find some wires. Disconnect them gently. Step four, detach the drain hose and its mounting screws. Next up, pull out the dishwasher. This will give you a sort of VIP pass to the inlet valve. Step 5. With the dishwasher out and about, gently remove its insulation cover and lay it on its back. Step 6. Remove the drip tray, then disconnect the old inlet valve and wire connector. Once free, check it for dirt, debris, damage or buildup that's preventing the valve from opening up all the way. Step 7. If it's damaged or riddled with mineral deposits, wave goodbye to the old valve which means installing a new inlet valve and attaching it to the hose. For clogs, a replacement won't be necessary since a little cleaning will do. You can even use a needle to remove stubborn debris. Step 8. Time to put things back. Connect the inlet valve to the dishwasher's base and slide back the drip tray. Then lift your GE dishwasher, secure the insulation, and slide it back to its sweet spot. Step 9. Reconnect that drying hose, bring those wires back together, pop on the junction box cover, and then put the supply hose and the lower access panel back. Step 10. Run a test cycle. This allows you to check if proper water supply has been restored and the H2O error resolved. If the error is still there, let's check for something else next. It's not always about the water pressure valve or inlet hose. Sometimes, it's all in the dishwasher's mind. By that I mean, the pressure sensor, which is our next possible culprit. Assuming that you've got water flow that could rival Niagara Falls, but your GE dishwasher's still flashing that H20 error. It could be because part of your dishwasher's brain, i.e. the pressure sensor, is having a little hiccup. It's like the weather app showing it's raining cats and dogs, yet you can't see a smidge of clouds for miles. Well, it happens. I had a client named Barry who faced a similar H2O error dilemma. But in his case, the sensor was the drama king. Basically, this part is responsible for detecting water pressure. And when it throws a tantrum, it can fool your dishwasher into thinking the water pressure's low. So, where's this sneaky sensor located? Dive deep and you'll spot it lounging at the lower back of your dishwasher. Usually you'll find it hiding behind the junction box thinking we can't see it. Before we start our little sensor intervention, let's heed these words of wisdom. Safety first. Therefore, make sure that the power and water supply are off. 
remember, we're aiming for a sensor replacement, not a dance with electricity. With that in mind, Step 1. Unscrew the access panel and use your muscles or pliers to disconnect the supply hose from the inlet valve. Step 2. It's junction box time. Unscrew the cover. Then untwist and carefully detach the connected wires. Step 3. Get your dishwasher out from its snug spot in the cabinet and remember, it's not a wrestling match. Once it's out, lay it down gently like it's sunbathing. Step 4. Now, for the main event. Say goodbye to the old pressure sensor. To remove it, you just need to do a little counterclockwise spin and it's out. Then swap it with the new sensor and lock it in place with a clockwise twist. Once your dishwasher's pressure sensor is back in the game, put everything back in reverse order. Wires, junction box, dishwasher legs. The whole shebang. Then run a test to see if the H2O error has resolved. If not, there's one more possible cause you can look into. Ever heard of the float switch in your dishwasher? No? Well, this little guy can be the reason behind your water woes. So let's take a look at how. Imagine a diligent office worker who knows exactly when the water dispenser needs refilling. That's your float switch. It's always monitoring making sure your dishwasher has the right amount of water during a cycle. When the level is too much, it'll send a notification to the control board to close the floodgates. However, when it's too little, it'll protest with an H2O error. So, what happens when this office worker decides to take an unscheduled break? Yup, you've guessed it. Water drama ensues. Now if you're wondering, where can I find this part? In most cases, it should be snugly kept within its housing bracket, inside the lower access panel. Unfortunately, for this issue, resetting the washer won't cut it. Trust me, I've been down this road and a simple restart isn't the answer. That's because it's not some fancy electronic error. On the contrary, it's just the float switch chilling, probably jammed or stuck inside the dishwasher. You know the drill safety first and that means turning the power and water off once that's done get your tools ready and let's get started first open your dishwasher's door wide then unscrew and gently set aside that lower access panel like you're uncovering a hidden treasure because in a way you are next it's time to go deeper by removing the inner panel screws and once you're in Play a gentle game of tug of war with the float switch. Pro tip, the wiring can be confusing. Therefore, I'd advise taking a photo of the setup before detaching the wires, because you'll need to replicate it when installing the new switch. Anyway, once you've successfully removed the float switch, you should test its terminals using a multimeter just to make sure that it's not fried. If there's no continuity, then it needs replacement. So, swap it out for a new one and make sure you reattach the wires as shown in the picture you took earlier. In doing so, the H2O error should resolve and your dishwasher should get back to whirling and whooshing like nothing ever happened. Alright, and that wraps up this GE Dishwasher H20 error troubleshooting video. So far we've tackled the most common issues that are likely to cause this annoying error. And I hope you've been able to fix your trusty appliance in the process. If not, don't hesitate to reach out to us on the Simply Swider Facebook group, where I and other appliance pros are ready to be of further assistance. You'll find the link in the description. Anyway, if you liked this video and would love to see more of these appliance saving guides, all you have to do is like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We'll help you uncover the most mind-boggling appliance mysteries with ease. See you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.